Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday, and welcome to your algebra review video. So this is going to go over um, at least one question for every topic that you're going to see on your summative assessment. And I actually have your summative right here, and I literally just went through in the exact same order. So the order in which you're going to see the questions in the video um, is the order in which you'll see the questions on the summative. So thank you for tuning in. It will highly benefit you. Like, trust me, watch the entire video. It's really going to benefit you. And here we go. Oh, I even put Tyrone in there to wish you luck. Duh. <laughs> okay, so the first skill that we're going to be looking at, um, this is back from lesson 3.1, is when you're given a graph and you need to write the inequality for it. I usually always start with the variable, it does that matter, I'm going to start with x. Now, I can see that it's shading all of the numbers that are greater than 4, that are bigger than 4, and because it's an open circle, that means it does not include 4, so it's just going to be greater than. And there you go. <laughs> Nothing crazy. <laughs> For my bottom one here, let's go ahead and start with the variable. Now, these are shading all of the numbers that are smaller or less than 3. And because it's a closed circle and it includes 3, we know it's going to be less than or equal to 3. So remember, if you have a closed circle, that's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If you have an open circle, that's just less than or just greater than. Um, skill number two is when you're talking about just solving a multi-step inequality and then graphing your solution. So when I see this, it's almost kind of like we treat it like a regular equation. Okay, wow. Um, let's go ahead and distribute first. So I know that 3 times x is 3x plus 3 times 5 is 15 greater than or equal to 21. Now I know that for a lot of you, this is just pretty straight review, so I'm not going to talk through my process. Um, divide by 3, well maybe I am. So then I get that x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so that's part one. You have your answer. Now I need you to graph your solution. When you're doing this, we don't need anything crazy on your assessment. We just need to know that you know how to show this graph. Like you can literally just put like a 2, a 3, and a 1. Because it's greater than or equal to, that tells me that it's going to include 2, meaning my circle needs to be shaded in. And it's saying all of the numbers that are greater than two. So you need to be shading all of the numbers that are greater than two. Remember that trick we also talked about in math class. The little point is kind of like it's an arrow going this way. That means you shade this way. Moving on. <laughs> um, this is one that we spent quite a lot of time on and I feel like you all did such a nice job by the end of it and you mastered it. So I'm really excited to see what you produce on your assessment. So it says T is the set of even integers less than nine. And we need to write that in both roster form and set builder. Remember that roster form, you just list the elements in the set, whereas set builder, that's when you have to like describe the properties of it. Super Vargas Plant Latte. Um, I know that my class, we had many different acronyms. So I did the Super Vargas Plant Latte or Small Violins Play Loudly. That's just a way to remember every element that you need within Set Builder. So let's go ahead and start with the roster. So it says T is the set. So we have T equals, you're going to give yourself your little fancy brackets, even integers less than nine. So the first even integer less than nine is going to be eight and then six, and then four, and then you can just do your dot, 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 so you can just stop right there, and you're done. <laughs> Remember, roster, you're just listing it. For set builder, okay, so S is the set name, so we start with T, and you put your little brackets. V is your variable. Um, I will pick E, okay? It, it really does not matter. So you define your variable and give yourself your little divider bar. P stands for property. Now, the property of the number is that it's an even integer. So you'll say E is an even integer. And then L stands for the limit. Now, I know this is being kind of nitpicky, um, but that's just who I am. So when you, after you write your property, E is an even integer, you need a comma, and then you write your limit as an inequality. The limit says that it has to be less than 9. So I'm going to say E is less than nine. And then you close your brackets. So this might also be a really good thing to put on your note card. This SVPL, small violins playing loudly, set name, variable, property, limit. Okay, just to make sure you have all of your elements there. 
Next, um, if we give you a set of elements, you need to be able to list all of the subsets. And a good little tip or trick is that if you have three elements, you are going to have eight total sets. Like you should have eight total sets listed. The way that I usually do it, just to make sure I don't forget anything, number one, I start by listing the entire set. So I've got A, B, and C. Like you literally just list the whole thing. <laughs> For my second set, you can list an empty one. And remember that we call it that a null set, like meaning that there's nothing in there. Then we can list every individual element. Now, just please spare me for the sake of time. I'm not going to do brackets for every single one. So I'll have just A. I'll have just B. I'll have just C. The last three sets are your different combinations of the letters or these elements within. So for example, I can have A and B. I can have A and C and then I can have B and C. You don't need to list it. Like if I have BC, you don't need to then list it as CB. That doesn't really matter. So when you have um, a set right here and there's three elements within, there will be eight total set sets. I would always start by listing the full set, empty, each individual, and then your different combinations. And that's just kind of a good way to make sure you don't forget anything. Okay, now we're moving into our more complex, I would say like our more complex material of chapter three, solving compound inequalities. First of all, I know that this is an and inequality, okay, just based on the way that it looks and based on the way I do not see the word or written like within it. If I'm asking you to solve this, not only are we going to solve it, but we're also going to graph it and we're also going to write it in an interval notation. That will be an expectation for you on the test. And I feel like we've made you do that a zillion times, so it shouldn't be anything new. Our goal is to get X by itself within the middle here. Okay. Remember, you got your divider bars down the middle. To get rid of this negative one or this minus one, you need to do the inverse operation. So the inverse of minus one is plus one. And I'm going to do that to every single element, or sorry every single part, all three little parts here. Now these cancel, and now I have x by itself, which is great. 4 plus 1 is 5, and then copying down my sign, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Because I have x alone in the middle, okay, there we go. There's your answer. You are also going to be asked to graph it and write it in intervals. So I guess I'll just do interval next. Now because I have got a negative two and I've got a five. Because this is less than or equal to, that means that I need a bracket, okay? Because this is just less than, that's going to be a parentheses. It's okay to have one bracket on one side, one parentheses on the other side. It does not matter, okay? I got my answer. I've got interval and now I need to graph it. So again, we're not expecting some crazy number line here. You just need to make sure that you have both elements listed right here within your number line. Because this is less than or equal to, because it's a bracket, we know that this is going to be a filled in circle right here. Since this is just less than, just a parentheses, it doesn't include the five, this is going to be an open circle. And then we know that with and inequalities, we shade right in the middle. So just to kind of recap, when you have an and, your compound inequality will look like this. It's kind of like it's all like pushed together. You've got your variable in the middle. You don't see the word or, obviously. Um, your interval notation, it just looks like two elements within. And then your graph is shaded in the middle. Here's an or compound inequality for you to solve. You're literally going to see that it has the word or in it, which is nice for you. We're just going to solve these separately, almost as if they're their entire separate compound uh, Oh my gosh, I'm getting my words mixed up. Like they're almost like their own separate inequalities here. So the first thing I'm going to do to get 3n by itself is I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Okay, so I've got 3n is greater than 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and I've got n is greater than 3. So there's half my answer. I'm going to bring down the word or because I'll need the other half over here. All right, and now... I've got minus 3, minus 3. We've got 4n is less than negative 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4. And you get that n is less than negative 1. So part 1, here's your answer. You've got n is greater than 3 or n is less than negative 1. Remember, you're going to have that legitimate word right in there. Um, I think I'm going to graph it next. Just 
I'm just feeling it. So I've got negative one right here and I've got a three here. Because it's just greater than and just less than, I know that both circles will be open, which is kind of nice. And it says n is greater than three. So I'm gonna shade all of the numbers that are greater than three. Or n is less than negative one. So I'm gonna shade all the numbers that are less than negative one. When you see a graph like that, you know that it's an or graph because it's shooting off into the other directions. The last thing, you need to write this in interval, and I think this is one of our big struggles from this chapter, is when we're looking at an or compound inequality, how to write it in an interval notation. No matter what, it's kind of like you read your graph from left to right. So I've got negative infinity, and then my lower limit is negative one. Because this is an open circle, I will have a parentheses. My next limit is three, and again, this is an open circle, so I'll have three, and it goes all the way to positive infinity. Um, both ends of your OR interval notation right here and right here, right by that negative infinity and positive infinity will always have a parentheses because you can never contain infinity. Like there's no limit to it, it never ends. So it'll always be parentheses. All right, moving on. Okay, absolute value equations. For this, your goal is to get this part, like your variables stuck inside of your absolute value bars isolated before you can set up your two cases. So like right now, I can see that this isn't isolated, so I need to subtract five on both sides. So I've got y is equal to five. Now this is isolated, so I can set up my two cases, meaning I've got y is equal to five, and then I also set it equal to the opposite. Y is equal to negative five. And you're done. <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Like, it, whenever you have an absolute value inequality, you always have to think about, well, like, for example, the absolute value of negative three is positive three because it could either be three away on the side of it or three away on the other side of it. So you need um, your positive and your negative cases right here. All right. Here is the really big thing that I want you to see. Um, I'm a little bit nervous that we're going to make a mistake on this on the test. I can still see my kids last year taking this test, and they just did so much work when they really didn't need to. Here we go. Let's pretend like you're sitting down in your summative, and you're like, okay, here's an absolute value equation. I need to go through and solve this. Your goal is to get your absolute value bars isolated. So I'm going to start by subtracting 7 on both sides. So I've got 3, and then I've got my x minus 4 equals negative 27. An absolute value can never, ever, ever be negative. Literally never. It just can't be. It can never be negative. The moment that you have something set up like this where it's equal to negative 27 or equal to negative 100 or whatever, stop. There are no solutions. Like, please, goodness gracious, stop. You cannot have like the absolute value of X equals negative 10 or like the absolute value of 2X plus 1 equals negative 3. Test makers put that on there to try and trick you. It can never be negative, so it's going to be no solutions. Please save yourself some work. It is so hard sometimes as a teacher to sit there and just watch kids like struggle and hustle through this like complex equation. Where I'm like, no, you don't have to do anything. It's no solutions. So when you're taking your test on Monday and you see something like this, think back to Miss LeVan going crazy in this video. I'll be like, please do not solve it. It's no solutions. Okay. Most complicated, I think, of the entire chapter. So let's focus in here. This is called an absolute value inequality. And this is when we use the little acronym LAGO to help us. That means that if we see a less than, oh gosh, wrong color. That means if we see a less than sign, it's going to be an and inequality. Or if we see a greater than sign, it's going to be an or inequality. Okay, this is also where I'm going to pause this video really quick. When you are on your test, if you put a little star with the number 17 somewhere on there, you will get a special reward. So anywhere on your test, but make sure I can see it because I'm really old. So <laughs> um, if you put a star with the number 17 on there somewhere, you will get a special reward. Okay, don't tell your friends because you need to be rewarded for actually watching this video and studying. Don't tell them. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, so looking at this absolute value inequality, I see that this is a less than sign, which means that it's going to be an and inequality. That's actually not too bad because when we do that, if I see a positive 10 over here, 
all I have to do is just swing the opposite of that on the outside and solve it as if it's just an and inequality, um, which is kind of nice. So if I reset this up, it looks just like that. Now I can go through and solve this. And we already talked about this earlier in the video. I need to get X by itself. So I added three to every component. I got negative seven X 13. So first of all, you're done. There's your answer. Yay. If I put it in interval, I've got negative seven and 13 because it's less than or equal to brackets. Okay. Brackets. Cause it includes those values. And then my graph will look just like this. Because it's less than or equal to, because it's brackets and it includes those values, your circles are going to be filled in. And because it's an and inequality, we shade all of the numbers in the middle. Because it, it actually looks just like your answer. You got negative 7, 13. All of the answers are within the middle right here. Now, let's look at the or absolute value inequality because this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. When I see this, I see that I've got a greater than sign. Greater than means that we are going to set up an or inequality. We need two cases. To do that, I'm going to write out the entire thing as its original. So 2x minus 1 is greater than 5. That's great. For the second one, you're going to rewrite what you see in the absolute value bars. So just this 2x minus 1. Oh, I should change colors. Sorry. Okay, 2x minus 1. You're going to flip your sign and make this the opposite. So when you see a greater than inequality with an absolute value bars, you're going to set up two cases. The first one is like, essentially, it's kind of like just like your original. Okay, ignore my spelling. The second one, you keep what's in your absolute value bars, flip your sign around, and make this the opposite. Now we can go through and solve it separately, kind of like what we did before, again, earlier in the video. Greater than 6, divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay, so you've got x is greater than 3 or... Mm -hmm. Okay, divide by 2, divide by 2. I'm going fast because I don't think you need instruction on how to solve a simple inequality. <laughs> or at least I hope not. <laughs> Otherwise, we're in kind of big trouble. <laughs> okay, so here's your answer. You've got x is greater than 3 or x is less than negative 2. So there's your answer. Now we need to put it in interval and we need to graph it. Um, I am going to graph it first. Okay, I just see greater than and I just see less than, which means that we're going to have open circles. And it says all of the numbers that are greater than three, so we shade this way, and all the numbers that are less than negative two, so we shade this way. Again, you know you did it right because it's splitting off into two separate directions. It's like two separate things in your number line, which makes it or. Your interval, please, please, please pay attention because I've noticed our little mistakes with this. When we've got interval notation for an or inequality, we always start with negative infinity, comma, my lower limit is negative 2, and because it's an open circle, I'll use parentheses, joined by the U. My next limit is 3, and it goes to positive infinity. Okay, also, if you hear barking, that's my neighbor's dog, Millie, so I'm sorry. She's really cute, though. All right, so just a quick recap before I stop this video. Um, for your Chapter 3 summative, it should... It won't take you no longer than one period. You can use a note card that you can put examples on, tips, tricks, I don't know, whatever. Um, but here are the skills you'll have to do. You will have to be able to look at a graph and write an inequality. You'll have to be able to solve and graph multi-step inequalities. You will be given a set, and you will need to write it in Roster and Set Builder. I would put this little acronym to help you, SVPL, Small Violins Playing Loudly. Thank you, Brittany. Um, you will have to list the subsets for each set. You will have to solve compound inequalities. This is one that looks like and. This is one that looks like or. In addition to solving them, you'll have to graph them and write them in interval notation. You will have to solve absolute value equations. Remember, you need to get your absolute value bars by themselves and isolated and then set up two cases to 5 and negative 5 or to 10 and negative 10. And remember your special case here. You'll have to solve absolute value inequalities. If you see a less than sign, you set up an and one. So if I've got 10 here, I'll swing a negative 10 on the other side. 
if it has a greater than sign, it's or. So you set up your two cases and solve separately. You're going to be great. We have been so proud of you this chapter, and it really just makes me proud to be your teacher. Um, so make sure you study. Um, obviously, you watch the video. Make your note card. Finish your study guide. And last thing, I'm going to show you this in Schoology. Um, a few different study resources. So you have all of my lesson videos that have been on YouTube. I linked them here. I'll link this video in here in a second. You have your rapid practice slides. That'll help you as well. There's a review quizzes game. Um, Mr. Samario made a whole video, like a whole folder of videos from Pearson, or sorry, not Pearson, Savas. So those are there as well. But please use those to study. You're going to be great. I can't wait to see you. Have a wonderful weekend. And I have a surprise for you this coming Friday. So you'll see. All right. Bye, everybody.